Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Data Science Pathway and Fellowship Info Session. Uh, my name is Casey Wynn. I am a faculty at Moreno Valley College. I have with me some of my colleagues from RCCD. Um, I will let them introduce themselves to you, along with some uh, two professors uh, from UCR. Um, and later on, we'll, you will hear from them about the fellowship program that we currently have this summer. So this is the agenda for today. Uh, we'll go through the faculty introduction. We'll, Dr. Lair will go a little bit over uh, data science, along with Dr. Legner and Mrs. Uh, Professor Hutchins, talk a little bit about data science pathway and how you can uh, prepare for UCR transfer. Um, and then UCR professors will talk to you about summer fellowship. And um, I invited some fellows from the prior summer to share their experience to you, and hopefully they'll be able to join us um, in a little bit. And then we'll go over how you can apply for the fellowship and possibly look into taking the classes starting in the fall. And then we'll go through Q&A. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, let me introduce University of California Riverside faculty. I believe Miriam is on. So Miriam, can you tell the students a little bit about yourself? Oh, thank you, Casey. Um, yeah, I'm a, a, a professor in the computer science department at UC Riverside. And um, I work with um, uh, faculty here at RCCD on um, the NSF Data Science Corps um, initiative. And we run the um, Data Science Summer Fellowship, which will give you a little bit of information um, about uh, in a few minutes. Um, I'm not sure if my colleague, um, so we I, I co-direct this program with um, a colleague of mine, and uh, Professor Annalisa Flores, um, who's a, a professor in the statistics department at UC Rivers. Thanks, Casey. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to proceed to the RCCD faculty. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Casey Nguyen. I teach in the cybersecurity and programming classes, and I'm part of the um, DS Path grant with partner in uh, with UCR. And then next, I'll pass it over to Carolyn Hutchins from Norco. Hi, my name is Caroline Hutchins. I am from the math department um, at Norco College. Uh, I traditionally teach the statistics courses at Norco College. So um, I get to introduce statistics to many of the students there. We'll go to RCC next. Dr. Legner. Hi, I'm um, Dr. Mary Margarita Legner, and I'm a math professor here at Riverside City College, um, where I teach um, differential equations, um, calculus, and our new course, College Algebra. I'm also the discipline facilitator for math in the um, RCCD district. And we'll go to Dr. Lair. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Lair. I teach uh, computer science here at the Riverside campus. Uh, I also uh, 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 faculty mentor for the NASA suits uh, project that we have here on campus, as well as the uh, uh, computer um, programming uh, competition site director here um, for the ACM. Dr. Lair, can you go a little bit about what the students are expecting in data science? Oh, there. So, sorry about that. I'm working my phone, which I'm trying to listen to you on, and then the speaker here. So, I'm going back and forth because of. Uh, uh, I'm here in the college in the lab, and uh, I have better equipment in the classroom and at home, but uh, here in the lab, I found out how 
the setup is a little bit less than to be desired, but nonetheless, um, data science. Uh, many years ago, I was in the, um, my graduate degree and PhD is, is in statistics. So um, data science happens to be near and dear to my heart. And uh, in particular, um, I've had grants with uh, NASA where I actually wrote some uh, neural nets to analyze the PRCS thrusters. So data science is a huge arena that encompasses not only statistics, um, uh, artificial intelligence, neural nets, uh, it's, uh, it's all encompassing. So it's a great science that kind of um, goes between uh, data and computer science and uh, basically gathering information that we might not be able to um, specifically uh, address with simply utilizing statistics and or computer science. So it is a very broad field and it is opening up. And in the last several years, um, many departments <clears throat> have uh, specifically um, geared their, their attention towards the, the new, new area of uh, science, which is and specifically um, termed it in terms of data science. So uh, next, if you could, Casey. So how uh, we basically got started this at RCC is that um, Miriam out at UCR uh, contacted us to kind of utilize a different uh, language instead of C++, um, because it was very difficult for other uh, uh, disciplines in the sciences, uh, other than computer science, to kind of uh, 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 develop an affinity to very quickly for it. So we uh, got together and um, decided to initialize uh, uh, programming uh, with the other sciences using Python instead of C++. So Python has become the de facto kind of language that uh, due to data science is, uh, is utilizing um, for uh, most of their analytics. As a matter of fact, many of the libraries that you will see in Python were written in C++, um, but they are easily obtained and utilized in Python. So that has become kind of like the intro language to data science. And Miriam and I um, initially started out this process of collaboration between UCR here, looking at um, introducing uh, students to programming through Python. And then of course, that is kind of like the, uh, the uh, basis for uh, uh, analysis. Um, when we would like to um, consider the skills that are required in data science. It's one of those, uh, there's many other things that we could utilize like R and S and other languages, but Python seems to be a center focus for uh, the data science skills. And of course, data science involves many other types of uh, uh, fields and uh, capabilities, statistics being um, one of them. Uh, machine learning, uh, basically is involved with utilizing um, expert systems and developing neural nets and those kinds of uh, analysis to, um, to be able to take your data and find hidden, um, hidden uh, elements in the, uh, in the uh, data. Um, and then of course, being able to interface with uh, uh, databases. And you will find that the degree patterns that we have set up basically touch on each one of those. Uh, statistics, programming, uh, database involvement, and uh, machine learning. So it's, it involves all these skills that uh, you'll have to learn and then put together in terms of uh, synthesize all these to be a, a relatively um, adept in, a data scientist. So next. Now, salaries uh, in the 
in the analytical sciences in particular, for instance, in computer science, um, the salaries have a have a, a range that are fairly large. Like for instance, my some of my students uh, have gotten starting salaries as high as 180 and 190 thousand dollars. So that's at the the top end. Um, so that's what you kind of want to, you know, in terms of when you're looking at um, uh, salaries in this range, because there's a great deal of components with respect to, um, uh, you know. Uh, programming and utilizing computers to analyze the data, uh, it's, it's fairly a, 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 a large um, uh, swath of people that uh, when you look at it, the, the salary, especially in the mid, midpoint, is fairly high. So as you can see here on the, on the, on the screen, we have a number of um, uh, areas in data science and then a range of uh, salaries that you might uh, see across the country. So New York, Idaho, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, you can see the annual um, uh, salaries that you can kind of expect to see. And there is a wide range. Obviously, uh, depending upon where you are, um, the salary can be much different because like in, even in Riverside versus LA, uh, there might be a, a difference in, um, you know, cost of living. So these kind of correspond to cost of living, but nonetheless, you can see that uh, the salary ranges are, are quite high. So um, the type of companies that uh, would require this normally are fairly large and they do exist in the larger, um, larger cities, uh, both on the East Coast, West Coast, and in the center. Um, uh, less so in the, in the uh, less populated uh, regions. But nonetheless, um, they do seem to be fairly consistent across the country in terms of the salary range. So go ahead, Casey. Thank you. All right, so I'll, so I'll take a- in this you process, will... actually, Casey, you've, you've had the most impact in terms of developing both the AS and data science and the certificate pattern. Um, uh, Maybe I should let you talk about this, Casey, because you've, you know, we started out with a few classes, but you've actually are the ones that led um, the uh, development of uh, both the uh, degree pattern as well as the certificate pattern. So thank, thank you. Wait, yes. you're you're muted. Uh, am I okay now? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Please. All right, thank you. So for the the pathway to UCR, um, we are rolling the full courses um, in the fall of 2023. Um, but we've been offering Python programming as Dr. Lair mentioned to you, that Python programming is very important. Um, you will also have courses in database such as CIS 61 and CIS 63. Um, so those courses are important. And um, in the data science pathway, it is not an ADT but you are able to achieve an associate of science in data science. And in the case that if you just want to obtain a data analytics certificate, um, you can obtain an associate degree in computer science with the certificate in data analytics. That's perfectly fine as well. Um, you do see that some of the courses are shared, such as the math courses. So you will be required to take statistic, calculus, um, some of the math courses that you normally see for a STEM major. So if you are in computer science, you are pretty set with the math courses. Um, and if you like, we can share the details in the courses. Um, you can contact me or I will be able to put together the course plan and be able to share it via the websites or email. Um, so what you can look at is to consider taking an associate degree or you can obtain the certificates. Or if you are in computer science, you can just think about how you want to transfer to UCR and be able to obtain a bachelor in data science uh, or possibly a bachelor in computer science with emphasis in uh, data analytics and possibly going for the master program. So there are a lot of different flexible options for you. Um, so for today, we kind of just want to give you the overall picture if you want the specific, we can give you some more details on how 
you can build the pathway to UCR. Um, and with that, I want to, I guess, pass it over to Miriam. He's, she's going to talk a little bit about your summer fellowship program. I know many of you are interested in that. And that's why you're here. Great. Thank you, Casey. Um, so the uh, data science summership program, the main objective of that is to provide um, students with an opportunity to gain data science skills and apply it to real projects. Um, these projects are provided by industry um, or faculty. Um, this, um, this year's fellowship program will be eight weeks taking place um, in the summer. We'll have a kickoff um, event on June 23rd, and um, we'll be meeting um, uh, up to uh, August 18th. This is an in-person um, experience, so um, we expect students to um, come to UCR campus and engage with the um, various activities that we're holding. The first two weeks um, will be expecting you to be there, um, you know, Monday through Friday, um, usually from, um, you know, 10 to, to 5 um, p.m. And um, the first two weeks will basically include a lot of workshops and as well as sort of hands-on activities to give you experience in the various um, tool sets. So um, we'll have an advanced Python workshop a workshop um, that utilizes Python and some of the machine learning libraries, um, some workshops on data visualizations and various tools, as well as just, you know, kind of lecturing about machine learning techniques, how to do data cleaning, how to, um, uh, you know, um, figure out how to utilize some of the um, uh, uh, tools outside of the Python packages, things like, you know, Tableau and, and how to build that into your workflow. Um, so the first two weeks will be a lot of training and it will also be a time for you to better understand your project and work with your faculty advisor and your industry advisor to formulate the next steps. And then weeks three through eight of your um, project um, this is where you're just going to be focusing on your project um, and working as part of a team. So we will have teams of, let's say, four to five students. Um, and it's going to, they're going to be coming from the various institutions. So we'll have, your team will include UCR students, uh, students from RCCD, um, students from CSU San Bernardino, and so forth. Um, so you'll have these teams, and you'll be paired with a faculty advisor as well as an industry advisor, and you're going to be focusing on this project. And the goal is that by the end of the experience, you'll be giving a presentation for um, everyone in the program, as well as the industry uh, members um, on your findings, um, demoing if, 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 if your project was meant to build an application, then you'll be doing the application. If your project was building a, a data model to do some prediction or things like that, you'll be um, building that. So um, in terms of the program activities, um, we'll be including technical workshops. Um, so you know these technical workshops will give you a glimpse on some of the techniques to do things like data cleaning, data wrangling, um, how to use big data platforms and machine learning techniques. The activities will also include professional development workshops. So helping you prepare your resume or CV, um, coaching you on doing oral presentations and technical interviews. Um, the final experience will be a summer symposium in which the teams will be presenting their projects and their findings at the very end. And this is um, this opportunity will give allow you to connect with um, our industry partners and they'll be sharing information about internships and career opportunities with you all. And it'll just be a great, you know, a great opportunity to connect with with people in industry and and find out, you know, what do they do, what they're working on, the different um, pro, uh, you know, departments that they have, the different projects that they have, 
and learning about how to best um, you know, land that internship or that job opportunity um, at these um, local companies. So that's a sort of a, the program um, highlight. Last year, um, so this is a, going to be the second cohort. We had the first cohort last year. We had several projects from um, uh, various um, industry partners. So one of the projects was um, a project by um, NASA Ames. Um, they they provided us um, flight information. So if, if you think about, you know, when you take a flight, the pilots at the very end of the flight, they um, write a report about any strange occurrences, any difficulties they had. And that uh, flight report is then analyzed um, and uh, is labeled by different categories. So you can say, well, we had um, a malfunction here. We had this odd occurrence here. And what the students were tasked with was to look at this raw re you know, report and um, annotate it automatically instead of having a human in the loop. So they built, uh, they worked on um, that um, project. Another project was by Foothill Transit. Uh, so we had a lot of data uh, about bus routes in the Inland Empire, and we're trying to predict expected arrival time. Um, we had projects from NASA JPL. Um, one project was um, dealing with sensor data um, from Mars Orbiter and detecting anomalies. Another project was uh, we were giving satellite imagery um, over time for like 10 year span. And the objective was to predict land subsidence of so the land um, sub, uh, subsidence due to um, a lot of water being pumped in that area. And um, the last project was um, from the County of Riverside, um, analyze um, data spending and retention. So these are all you know, sample projects that students worked on and we're currently in the process of collecting more projects from our industry partners for the upcoming um, summer experience. So next, I would like to introduce some of uh, the first cohort fellows to kind of share their experience. Um, and I believe Liliana uh, had asked, or I had asked Liliana to speak so I'll go ahead and maybe stop sharing in case she wants to share some of her uh, prior work so you can see what the student had gone through. Is she here with us? Oh yeah. Hi, Lily. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. So let me share the screen pretty fast. I think you need to, um, let me share it. You're ready now. Okay. Can you see the full screen? I just have. Sorry. It's showing only, there you go. I don't know why it's doing this. Let me just try to share the screen again. Okay. Uh, while Liliana is trying to do that, um, I just um, shared the um, project's website um, in the chat and you can check out the uh, last year's projects by clicking on the projects page, uh, projects tab, and um, you can see the um, summary of some of the projects that the students worked on last year. Nice to get the time. Okay. Yeah, I think if you if you put it on the regular preview, that will be okay. Yeah. 
There you go. Just like this? Yes, that's fine. Okay, sorry about that. So, uh, hi everyone, my name is Liliana Dutch. Last year I had the opportunity to participate in the Data Science Fellowship. Uh, and I would like to show a little bit about my team's project. So, um, uh, GPL provides us with INSART uh, groundwater pumping and precipitation data in Central California Valley. And our goal was to create dashboards to demonstrate the relationship between the data. And just a little bit of background. Um, this area more than two, it is where we grow more than 250 different crowds and it provides food to uh, like 20%. It provides 20% of the food that we eat here in the United States. Uh, and during the dry years, uh, farmers have been pumping out water and when to keep the crops alive. And the problem that we face right now is that that land is sinking. And that is a phenomenon known as subsidence. So as I told you, JPL provides us with data, land subsidence, precipitation, and groundwater. They were in different formats. So we have to clean the data, um, find the way to what we're, what we're going to do with the non-numerical data and um, my team and I, we clean the data, normalize it, and after that, the next step was to create heat maps because the maps or graphs are an easy way to understand the relationship. So we um, study and research different Python libraries. Some of them are the Seaborn Library, Plotty Library, and Folium. At the end, we decided to go with the Folium Library because it was the one that we can um, use in the website. And just a little video. Um, this was the end result. So, um, you can see that if you click in different areas, it will show the heat map. And um, let me see if I can. Oh, no. Yeah. It will give you all the information we were able to put on one side, um, the data and how it looks and the other side it will show the heat map and one of the things that we like the most uh we were able also to go to the jpl and um and here in in california and this is a great experience where you guys are going to learn a lot of technical skills there's a lot of workshop that are really helpful to improve your skills and um, thank, thank you thank you lily um i watched lily's team presentation when i was there and they did a really good job so i hope that you will be joining the fellowship program and be able to gain some really useful experience um and then what we'll do is next i'm going to come back to the presentation and thank you so much Lily for sharing your experience <laughs> and putting in the time today. Thank um, you. <laughs> all right. So let me go back to share. So if you're interested in applying for the fellowship, uh, you can scan the QR. Uh, I believe some of you already have the flyer. So on the flyer, we also included the, the URL, so you can click on it, um, or you can visit the website and you can spend the time. Uh, I know on the application, it will require you to submit information. Um, there are questions that you need to answer, like why should you participate in this fellowship? 
Um, there's also a recommendation letter that you will need to upload, so make sure that you plan accordingly um, because the application is going to close at the end of this month. So you do have a little, like about a week left, so make sure that you plan on working on the application. Don't wait till the last minute. And we love to review your application. And then in April, um, the second week of April or so, we will let you know um, that whether you will move on to the fellowship program for the summer. Any question? Okay, so for questions, you are welcome to contact us. <clears throat> I'd like to invite Dr. Legner and Professor Hutchins to maybe share a little bit about, um, you know, what can they address and uh, how can they help the students, especially for RTC students and for Norco students, as you already heard from me and Dr. Lair. So Carolyn and Mary, would you like to say anything about the program or the fellowship? So, so I've gotten a few questions actually from students, and um, some of them don't have a knowledge of Python, though they do have C plus plus, and um, and so I would actually like to ask that question for them, since um, if they they have had uh all their math, I think that is needed to get um to transfer, um, but they have not had. The Python is that going to? So, I'd like to ask that question. How is that going to um, affect their application? So, I think for the most of the students at RCCD, um, some of the students have taken Python, like CIS thirty A or CSC eight, at with Dr. Lair at RCC. Um, now, as far as the fellowship program, I think in the last cohort, most of the student ha did not take Python and they they did fine uh, during the fellowship. You will have workshops that will address some of the basics. Um, and so Miriam can also tell you a little bit more about it. But I, I think that overall, I, you can apply even if you don't have extensive knowledge in Python or you have not taken Python. Um, I think having knowledge in C++ or other programming language is helpful because you understand programming logic. Um, and then if you come with the knowledge of Python, that's also a plus. So you can put some information like that on the application. Um, on the application, it's definitely not required that you know Python in order to participate. Thank you. You're welcome. Carolyn, do you want to mention anything? Um, I just want to say that, you know, for the Norco College students, I am available to answer any of your questions. Um, you know, you can reach me by my email. That's the best way to contact me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, um, meet with you. And, and again, a lot of my students are echoing the same question that Mary brought up of, you know, what if I don't meet all of the requirements? And I think you know, that it isn't that we expect you to be all the way through the pathway to apply, but more that, you know, you're interested in this and making some progress towards this degree. Yes, thank you for that point. I think that the fellowship is going to give you additional insight and let you see how to work with data and, and see what your potential career would be. Um, and it is a good way to connect and collaborate with, um, you know, the universities and university students. Um, and because UCR is likely the institution that you are going to go to. So I think that's important to kind of have that experience. Um, and then to be able to kind of think about your courses, if you are interested in obtaining your degree in data science and how that's going to transfer to UCR. So we have a question in the chat about how many um, letters of reference. And I believe you, um, Dr. Wen, you did say there was one letter of reference that we need. I think on the application, it requires two to three letter of reference. Okay. Um, and you can, uh, you should be able to reach out to your professors and colleagues. And maybe if you have worked with someone that they can provide you with your performance information or something like that. 
um, you should be able to submit those type of letter. So I would recommend two to three in preparation for this application. And you should always have two to three letter of recommendation every two years, just for job purposes anyways. So this is a good start for you to kind of plan out um, how you're gonna approach your career. And we're gonna give you some insight about professional development uh, through the fellowship. So that will be a great way to kind of think about how you would approach your career in the upcoming years. Yeah, and uh, maybe I just wanted to, that, that's great advice, Casey. Um, I just wanted to also clarify that in the application itself, um, it just asks for the name and the email of um, people that can provide you a, a letter of recommendation. And um, the, um, the reviewers will, will then um, reach out to, to, to those folks um, to, to obtain the letters. So just make sure that you're including the name and, and the email address of, of your letters of recommendation, people who are willing to provide you letters of recommendation. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so I will go ahead and stop recording um, and then